right, in this video I'm going to show you how to make this twisted DNA double helix or a twisted ladder effect all made inside of MO2. So to get this effect, it's not as bad as what you would think to get a deformed shape inside of MO2. So I already have MO2 loaded up in Apple Motion and I'm going to go ahead and add a sphere. And I'm going to switch over to my perspective camera just so I can uh, zoom on out, rotate it around, and just get a good view of everything. So with this blue arrow here, this is the positive Z direction and this is the negative Z direction. And I'm going to take this sphere and I'm actually going to give it a negative 3 for X position. Now this number is arbitrary, but we do want to remember it right here in a moment. I'm going to duplicate that sphere. And instead of giving this a negative 3 X position, I'm going to give it a positive 3. So it's going to appear to come closer to us in the window. Let's take those two spheres, holding Shift or Command, I'm going to tap on both of those, right click, and I'm going to group them. So now we have these two spheres inside of this group. Now let's add a linear instancer. Let's take the group and drop it inside of the linear instancer, and we immediately see five spheres that move off in the negative Z position. If we go into our instancer settings, all we really have to do here are three things. One thing, we want to bump up the count. Right now, all we have is five spheres. Let's go and bump this up to something crazy, like maybe 300. Now this is going to make those spheres appear to be capsules, and that's exactly what we want. We want to smash these spheres together to give it one solid uniform shape. Now let's take our end position here and make it even more negative, such as negative 30, and it's still going to appear to have somewhat of a uniform three-dimensional shape. Yeah, you can see some ridges in here, but still it looks solid, right? I'm going to zoom on out some more. Pan on over just so that we can see what will ultimately be the two backbones of our double helix or the sides of our ladder, whatever you want to call it. Now here's what we want to do with these two backbones. I want to come down to the end rotation on the Z axis and notice as I start cranking this up, you're going to have that twisted deformed shape and that's exactly what we want. And by us having so many of these spheres squished together, it appears that we have, you know, a string or a tube or something that is twisting. Now to get this to animate, all we need to do is keyframe it. So I'm going to bump this back to zero degrees. I am going to show my timeline. I'm going to add a keyframe at the beginning of my project and scroll to the end of my project or however far you want. And I'm going to add another keyframe and I'm going to roll with 360 degrees. Let's play this back. And just like that, you have your twisted double helix, almost, right? So I'm going to go back into MO2 now, and what we want to do is we will also want to add a cylinder here. And our cylinder is right over here, and it's kind of hiding where the camera is. I'm just going to hide that camera, but there's our cylinder. Now I want to rotate this on the Z axis 90 degrees, and I want you to watch this cylinder here. It's just going to rotate. 90 degrees and now it's pointing towards this backbone and this backbone. Now remember how I made the X positions a negative 3 and a positive 3? That means the centers of these two backbones will be 6 units apart or 6 whatever measurement, meters, centimeters, whatever. So I'm going to take the height down here and I'm going to adjust that to 6. Since one was at negative 3 and one was at positive 3, they're 6 units apart. Let's take the radius of this cylinder and let's bump it down to make it skinnier. So maybe something like 0.25. Now we don't want to drop the cylinder into this instancer. This makes like a platform or something like that. But what I want to do is I want to create another linear instancer. I'm going to drop the cylinder into it. And now we have those five by default pieces again. Now you can adjust the count for the instancer that this cylinder sits in. Maybe we want, let's say 20 of them. So they look squished together, but remember, what we also want to do is adjust the end position. And if I'm not mistaken, we had that set to negative 30. And what this will do is this will evenly space 20 of those cylinders along this what looks or appears to be a ladder. Now, if that's too many, let's just bump it on down to say 15. Now, it may appear that these are closer together, but that's just the effect of the camera. So if I rotate things around and pan on up, you can see that these are equally spaced apart. 
And then the last thing we want to do here is taking the end rotation for all of these cylinders. For the rotation Z, let's keyframe it at zero degrees for the beginning. And I'm just making this match that of the backbones. So setting this to 360 at the end of my project. And now if we want to apply some materials, for example, just so we can see a difference between these two, I'm going to go to my cylinder, apply a quick material. I'm going to go with basic surface two. So we have some blue steps to our ladder or blue connectors to our uh, DNA. Not a chemistry major, is it ADGC or ATGC? I can't remember, but anyway. Then I'm also gonna come back to this group. This group has two spheres inside of it, and if I want to apply the same material to those, just a shortcut if you didn't know this, we can actually apply a material to the group itself. And I'm gonna go with this reddish orange color. And by us applying it to the group, it will apply it to all of the pieces inside of the group. Now let's go back and play this and make sure everything appears to be working in unison. And there you have it, a deformation animation using a bunch of squished spheres with a high instancer count and then applying that in rotation to get that twisting or deformed effect. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.